to talk about burning bridges across Asia. It's Gaga. I chose uh, bridges because I thought this is the city of the bridges. And every movie I saw, the bridges were destroyed by a Godzilla or something. So I thought that would be the best appropriate topic for my... The first bridge I burned was, I took the step for leaving my own home ground, my comfort zone, and I left India forever. And I went to Bangkok and from then destiny has laid a different life which I live today. The video just shows us how domestically we in India eat with hands and how food is so great and how 1.3 billion people have food and nothing is fine. And how do I take this memory and how I convert them into a creative process for a three hour meal, which has become a kind of a culinary destination where in Thailand, 10 years back, they didn't even knew what was fine dining. And this is why I started doing this. Asian cuisine, I dare not teach you guys because you have great Asian food here and it's such a, it's every street I go, you get, it's like a, it's, it's like a city. Like this is India, this is Pakistan, this is uh, Arabic, this is Turkish kebabs, there's a whole Thai street. Everything is like incredibly well settled here. But I was talking to someone and she said, hey, do you know best Thai food? I said, where? He says, it's in San Francisco. I know this chef, he's amazing. I said, that's amazing. Best Thai food is in San Francisco. That's amazing. Yeah. But uh, uh, so uh, uh, have you been to Bangkok? No. Uh, the best Thai food is in San Francisco. Why do I go to Bangkok? Well, I couldn't answer that question. But that is what I'm here to tell you and give you this message that Asia has just begun. We in Asia and do you know this, that we are crazy rich Asians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want our food before time. We want things to happen the way we want. And we are this third world appetite with the first world thinking. And suddenly the third world appetite behaves like first world. So we don't have social skills of being in a fine restaurant. We are loud, but well, I think New York is louder, but <laughs> we are, we are, we are, we are always, we are always have our own domestic approach to food. And that is why in Gagan, we, we change everything. What did we do? Now, if you see the menu, which I showed in the video, it's made of emojis. And finally, we are working with Apple, and in future, we'll have emojis, better emojis for food. I mean, uh, not like only Japanese emojis choices, but we'll have better choices. And uh, we made 25 courses, out of which 22 will be eaten by hands. And that is why in our restaurant, it's, it's such a tough task to explain people that you have to eat with hands, and because they are in their best attire, they are looking good, and they want to eat a fine dining meal. But eating with hands, the complexity of it is so difficult because you have to create dishes that are supposed to be Indian, served in Bangkok, and supposed to be 50 best rated restaurant, and yet eaten by hand. So the cameras, the expensive foodie cameras suffer. <laughs> yeah, they suffer, and that's why I think 50 best should work on a good camera also sponsor. So, so we make our food more, more appetizing, but we can't. Because in India, we don't have edible flowers on food. We don't have all that, so we can't do that. And that is why in our restaurant, dishes are going through a minimalistic approach, step by step. And I don't have any choice, because I decided that my restaurant will have 22 courses eaten by hands. One of the dishes will be very provocative and I like to intimidate people, and I also suffer this problem where people come to our restaurant for three hours, travel across the planet, any day you come to our restaurant, the people from Mexico, from America, from Europe, 
from Japan, from Asia, from China, everywhere. And these people, when they come to our restaurant, for three hours, they're on the phone. No conversation. What do I do? I mean, it's so irritating. They book the table on the Valentine's, okay? <laughs> and they enter the restaurant. And when they enter the restaurant, the girlfriend was so pissed because she bought, the guy brought him to an Indian restaurant, so the flowers are already on the floor. <laughs> yeah, this used to happen, like, when we were not famous, but now we are, like, <laughs> now she kisses her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know how many couples went back without eating, having a fight on a Valentine? It was incredible. I got the money, but no food was served. <laughs> yeah. But then, this is the reality, and then on the Valentines, there's no, because my memory of Valentine is because I'm non-millennial, so my memory is create a pasta which is seven meters long, and the girl and the guy starts eating it, and they end up kissing. And I did that dish in my restaurant. Yeah, and the people were not kissing, they were on the WhatsApp. Yeah. And that's why I thought, in my restaurant, how do I make this as an advantage to an advantage? And I created emojis as a menu. So they would engage in the phone, but in a foodie way. And then, I will not allow you to eat in your pace. You will be dumped with food every four minutes to five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you have no choice just to eat, because you have come to eat. It's like a movie. When you go to a concert, do you just see them changing the equipment? And No, you just go and listen to them. And food is the real hero, not the chef. We are the best orchestras. We can do what we want, but in the end, if the music is not good enough, we will never have customers. And my job today, we are, I wear this not for sympathy, but I think it was something my mom said. She said, like, you're running a restaurant. And every time I become, like, I win the 50 best awards, I call my mom emotionally. Mom, I won it again. She says, again you won it? How do you win it again? Even my mom says that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, what are you like? Mom, I won it. I said, okay, okay, but next time you won't win. Remember, you have to go down. You have to burn the bridge. Because you've got to leave behind your success and move to better things in life. And that is why we, as chefs, are the biggest insecure people, like every celebrity in the world, every artist in the world. We want constant recognition in our life. And that is why we suffer this wrath of being criticized by foodies who are not even, who've not even traveled enough to understand your food, who don't understand your culture. There's people who are coming and telling you, I love my curry. I'm from this guy, she's a lady in Scotland. She makes the best chicken tikka masala. Don't you have chicken tikka masala? Well, I don't have. What do I do? My mom doesn't know how to cook it. And that is the wrath we, we, we have, this problem in Asia. But then, the foundations today we have, which we didn't have 10 years back, is late that Asia is not about only Japanese cuisine, because I love, we all love Japan, right? Okay, and I'm moving there too. So, so we have restaurants from all over Asia, and there's a new movement out there. Which is, we are, yes, we are, we are 30, 40 years late. But we are catching up fast. It's exactly like Olympics. It's exactly like music. It's exactly like everything else in today's world. That we've caught up late, but we are fast. And our only way here is that when you come to my restaurant, we'll ask you to do something. And for that, I'll show you a video. So please be prepared. When you come to my restaurant, you've got to see this video and be prepared in your mind. Thank you.